Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian coming to you from the TST Industries Garage. As you can see beside me, I have a gorgeous CBR 1000 RR. It's a 2017 model year from Honda and we wanted to throw some pod signals and our fender eliminator on it. So that's what we're gonna go ahead and explain in this video. I'm gonna walk you through step by step how to get these BL6 signals on and how to get that flash rate to be back down to the OEM because once you throw these LED style pod signals on, you will induce what we call a hyper flash. We'll get into that a little bit further in the video, but we do have something called our flasher relay module that we're also going to be installing that helps you bring that OEM flash rate back to your bike. So guys, let's just jump right into it. There's some disassembly required, but it's pretty straightforward and I'll walk you through every step. All right, so our first step before we actually remove the OEM fender is going to be to take our plate off, retain our plate hardware. So with our plate off and the hardware retained in that, we're just gonna set that down. Our next step is going to be to grab the key. We're actually gonna remove this passenger seat here. So push down on that passenger handle there and just pull off that seat. Setting that off to the side, set the key back in the ignition. We're gonna grab a five millimeter Allen. We're actually gonna go ahead and remove the main rider seat as well. So there's gonna be two bolts underneath the flaps at the rear. So just pull those forward, go ahead and loosen these bolts up. Those bolts will remain captive if you kind of let the seat just kind of hang back down on there. So that's how I'm gonna leave that, set the seat off to the side. All right, so with a three millimeter Allen, we're gonna go ahead and take this little tail light shroud fairing off. These two bolts are gonna do that for us. Set those bolts down in a safe place. Then we're gonna go ahead and actually be able to slide out this little bracket. You're gonna to wanna to kind of push down on the fairings around it kind of lift up, you can see that I got that one to pop. Same over here, so kind of push down, push in on the lower one and lift up with the upper one. There we go. And this guy can kind of start to wiggle out. You come backwards with it. There we go, we can set that off to the side. We're gonna take that three millimeter Allen again and actually begin to remove this main fairing portion here. Again, set these guys down in a safe place. We're gonna grab a Phillips head screwdriver and there's two little push pins down here. They're the screw style push pins, so you actually have to unscrew them before you can pull them out. Now, as you'll see with mine, they'll actually sometimes spin freely. So I'm gonna take a little flat head screwdriver and hold down on the edge while I spin the actual center portion out. Once that's far enough out, you can go ahead and take that little flathead and pry that guy out, set that in a safe place. Repeat the process on the other side. All right, so with those two little push pins out, this top fairing is actually free. We're gonna go ahead and continue what we were doing before when we took that little taillight shroud off. So you're gonna wanna pop some of these sections loose. They do just kind of click together. So push in and down on the lower portion and kind of lift up on that upper portion of the fairing. Start to get some of them to click. You can see I got that one. Do the same on the other side. Start to feel them lift away from each other. Just be very gentle and don't apply too much force. And once you got most of them popped out, you can actually come to the back of it and kind of lift up and back. There's two little sliding lock features right here. We're gonna to wanna to get those to release as you see I just did. Now, just wanna pull that passenger handle back, lift that fairing off, and set it off in a safe place. All right, so we, before we go ahead and remove this lower fairing and this little undertail portion, we do wanna come down underneath the bike. There's two of those little push pins again, so we're gonna go ahead and remove those. Might be able to get them, yeah, without using my little flathead this time, actually. This one did need that little flathead. There we go, set those guys in the same place as the others. And let's continue up above the bike. All right, so with those two push pins out, we can actually go ahead and there's six screws that we need to remove before we can take this lower portion off. There's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then five, six. So 
So these guys are a little bit trickier to get to, but if you go through this mounting bracket here, you can actually get a pretty decent angle if you have a thin enough and long enough screwdriver. You don't get a perfect engagement on the head, but if you're careful, you get enough of an engagement to actually get that out. You could press on the bottom a little bit to give you a little bit of extra support there. You can see I'm skipping just a tiny bit, but if you're careful and take your time, you can actually get these out. Go ahead and grab it once you see that it's starting to come out. You don't want to fall that or have that fall on the bike. There we go. So with a little bit of finesse and patience, you can actually get those two out without having to remove this big bracket here. If you did want to do that to make it easier on yourself, it's just going to be these bolts here, but we can get that without doing it. So we chose not to. So with those off, we can actually go ahead and start to disassemble this a little bit more. You're going to see all these little locking features along this lower fairing and this little lower sub tray portion. So we're going to want to go ahead and actually start to remove those lock features. So it's a little slide back action there. There's a little clip down here. You're going to want to kind of push your finger on it. Try to get this black portion to separate a little push forward. will help you do that. There you go. You can see I dislodged that. Same thing on the other side here. A little slide back for the rear portion. A little slide out. And get my finger in there and kind of hit that latch. And then this portion can just slide back, down, and off. These are the last two little tab features that you weren't able to see, but those did just slide out and back. So set this over with that upper fairing. All right, so the very last step before we can actually remove this OEM fender is to remove this little undertail shroud piece. So it's a little bit tucked up underneath the OEM fender, so it's gonna be an initial slide forward and then back and down. So initial slide forward, back and down, over the fender because it has that nice little slot. And you can see here that little lip that I was talking about, that was tucked up underneath the OEM fender in which that's why we had to go forward and then back and down. Set that off to the side and we can go ahead and remove this OEM fender. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove our OEM turn signals and license plate light. You can take that little turn signal housing, kind of pull it off to the side, but we're gonna actually take this license plate light, there's a little tab there, you just press down, pull off. And we're gonna go ahead and look at our turn signals here. There's little tabs right there. I take a little flathead, lift up on the tab. I'm gonna to try to show you guys while I do it. That's a little difficult. So lift up on the tab and then pull back. Again, lift up on the tab, pull back, very easy. And you can just set that kind of back in its original position. So we're now gonna go ahead and take the toolbox that the manufacturer gives you. You can just kind of slide that out of that rubber band. We like to leave that there. Set that off to the side. Grab a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter box wrench. We're gonna go ahead and take the socket, make sure we're lefty loosey. We're gonna break loose these four bolts. They have nuts on the other side, so you're gonna take the box wrench, throw it on this side, and then break that nut loose like so. Take those nuts keep them in a safe spot. I like to keep the bolts in until we're actually ready to drop the fender off, being that they are still kind of holding it in. So again, we're gonna repeat that process on the other side. All right, so with the four nuts off, we can actually go ahead and take these bolts out. But once we do that, just know that the fender will drop off immediately. So I like to go ahead and remove the frontmost bolts first. Might want to wiggle the fender a little bit, free them up. Set those down. And then with the hand on the fender, you can go ahead and pull out those last two. Just kind of wiggle until you free up the bolt. The threads sometimes catch on the frame. There we go. And just like that, guys, OEM fender removed. All right, guys, so I'm gonna take our standard assembled fender eliminator here. Um, you can see I threw a little license plate light on just to speed things up a little bit. We do cover that in the rest of the fender eliminator install video, but we are going to be continuing with the signal installation here. Um, I do have the flasher relay module here in front of me. I'll set that off to the side, but we'll touch on that a little bit later. That is something that you will require for this installation. I do also have 
our pod signal mounting kit, our BL6 style signals. This will also work with any of our pod signals, so our ARO, 18s, anything like that. And then I do have our two to two Honda harness converters. Uh, those will help this be a plug and play installation, just allowing it to be very easy and smooth for the end user. So we're gonna go ahead and take our fixed fender eliminator here. I'm gonna take my plate and my pod signal mounting kit. And that's what I'm gonna start with. So I'm gonna start with one of these smaller M6 screws, put two washers on it actually, drop it through the plate, and then make sure I capture my license plate light there. I'm gonna take one of these brackets and I'm gonna go slot side to the bolt, one more washer, and then the M6 cap nut. Okay, same process on the other side. You don't have to go crazy tight on those. We'll come back through with the tool and actually tighten them down. I want to make sure everything's centered once we're actually about to mount this on the bike. So we want to take one of our pod signals here. Um, just one thing to note when you're grabbing these, you want to make sure that the logo is going to read properly when you do have it installed. Uh, that'll just ensure that the lens is upright as well. So I do have the left side here, uh, my right, but the left side of the motorcycle. I'm just going to work with that one for now, and then we will show you that the other side is a mirror. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and spin off the nut that's on the stem of the signal. You wanna pass that over these bullet connectors one at a time. If you try to do them both, it could get caught. So I kinda like to stagger them and wiggle it off. And we're gonna pull both of the washers off of that as well. Go ahead and flip this over. Again, just do one last check, make sure that it will read in the proper orientation. I'm gonna pass this through the pod signal mount. I wanna take my mount and try to push it out a little bit. I left a good bit of adjustability. You wanna make sure that you have as much clearance in there as possible. So now we're actually gonna pass those components back over. So we wanna go flat washer first, then lock washer. Then again, one at a time for the bullet connectors through the nut. Then just go ahead and start tightening down on that. Just kind of get it in an appropriate position. Uh, we don't have to lock it down just yet, but just kind of make sure that it's not gonna move too much around on you. And then we're gonna take those two bullet connectors and just pass them up into our fender eliminator. So again, same process on the other side. All right, so with our signal wires routed through our closeout, we could go ahead and take one of our harness converters. Uh, I'll show you just the, the left side here, and then the right is an exact mirror. So we're gonna go, wanna go yellow to yellow and black to black. Make sure that you get a good connection. Those uh, bullet connectors can be a little difficult to work with. Just gonna do one, then tape, and then do the other and tape around both of them. So I do this step just to make sure that this little plastic sheath doesn't move around on us. Um, being that they are electrical components, if they do touch at any point, you could possibly short and blow your fuse for your signaling circuit. You do not want that. Same process on the other side. So the only thing I'll suggest before we go over to the bike and actually start installing this is just mark one of these signals. I'm gonna mark the, the left side, my right side. Uh, I'm just gonna put a little black mark on it just to know which one is the actual left side when we get into the motorcycle. Being that these are not color denoted like the bikes, it is a little bit hard and you'd have to plug them in, unplug them to figure out which one is which, left or right. So with our assembled fender eliminator and signals, we're gonna come over to the bike take those four OEM screws that came out of the OEM fender. We're gonna put this back up into the bike and just kind of drop those through. Try to make sure that your wires are routed out to the 
left side and kind of in between these two little mounting lobes. We're gonna take the four mating nuts, just tighten those down by hand at first, then we'll grab some tools. So we're gonna want a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter wrench. Give those a good cranking down. They do go straight into metal on both portions, so you don't have to be shy on those. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab this little lower cowling slash fairing, pull our wires kind of out of the way and then reinsert this the same way that the OEM went. So you're gonna kind of want to need to flex it around, making sure that those lips kind of clear our fender. So we're gonna to want to go lower first. Pop it into place. Make sure the upper clears as well. It takes a little bit of finessing, but it's a very flexible piece of plastic and you can get it to move into position pretty easily. So there we go. You'll know it's in position because there's two little screw bosses behind the taillight and they'll pop into place. You'll see that it's looking pretty right. So we're gonna grab that lower fairing Keeping in mind that we have some slide fasteners here and some more slide fasteners back here that will meet with that piece of fairing that we just put in. So you're gonna to wanna to start back behind it and then slide up and in. So get to an approximate position and then kinda of try to line things up as best you can. It's a flimsy piece of plastic so it's a little hard to work with. I like to do these lower tabs first and make sure that this little tab gets locked in as well, like so. Then flex these locks back into their positions. Hear them snapping together as they go. And again, you'll know that you have properly mated these two pieces once you see that these little screw bosses actually locate themselves where they should be. All right, so I am just gonna go ahead and throw those two push fasteners in that lower tail fairing portion. Now we could go ahead and take those six plastic screws. Last two are the tricky ones, so I like to go with my screwdriver, and then I grab the screw underneath, and then I help it locate down into that hole. Now you don't have a perfect line on this in terms of line of action, but if you're patient, you can actually get it to turn the head without skipping, and you don't risk rounding that head as long as you're very careful. So repeat for that last one. Move my signal wire out of the way. All right, so it's at this point that I'm gonna go ahead and grab my flasher relay module. Uh, I do just wanna show you guys why we actually do wanna have that on this bike. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in my right signal here, right on the blue. Just show you guys what a hyper flash looks like. So you can see that's a very fast flash rate, uh, much faster than OEM. It's the bike trying to tell you that your signal is out. We know that it's not. We've just replaced it with an LED style signal, even though these OEM are LED style, uh, they do not pull the same amount of current. So it is gonna try to tell you that that signal is broken. So we're gonna go ahead and install our flasher relay now. So the only thing to consider here is you're gonna see 
two plugs with green wires and two plugs with brown wires. Just make sure that you keep the side the same. So if you're gonna plug the, the wire with the green into the blue side, that is gonna be your right. So you're gonna to wanna to follow that green and plug your right side signal into that one. So the same with the orange. Orange to brown. Just do a double checking before you close things up. You'll see there a much nicer OEM style flash rate, much slower, more like you'd wanna see. Double check the other side. Both sides are working, so we can go ahead and continue. So I'm gonna take some of my excess wire here and just kinda do a loop around itself and then try to tuck it underneath. I'm gonna take that little wiring harness loom, kinda try to move some stuff into some positions here that makes sense. There's a lot of room to work with, but you just wanna make sure that you're not utilizing any viable trunk space or anything like that. So we can go ahead and actually take our flasher relay. It does come with zip ties, but on this bike, there's not really a good location. If there's another location that you guys find that you like better, I urge you to do so, but I'm just gonna actually slide that down inside the fairing and out of the way kind of keeping our wiring all over in this section here. Make sure everything's tidy, make sure it's not gonna pop up on us. We could go ahead and grab our upper fairing portion and uh, continue with the reassembly. All right, so we're gonna take our passenger handle kind of out in front of it. And again, this one's gonna slide into place, so we're gonna wanna come further back than we need to be and then kind of push it down and forward. So further back than we need to be. Look for all those little locating and mating tabs. Make sure everything's starting to line up into position. Don't wanna leave any out in the back either. Let's just take a little bit of time with this one. Be a little patient and kind of push it all down together. All right, so we'll take our little tail light shroud now as well. We can kind of lift up on this lower portion here, try to slide this guy underneath. You're gonna want these tabs to actually go over this little center portion. So like that, they kinda shimmy together. There we go. There we have it. So our four screws are gonna go back into our fairing through our little taillight shroud there. Just gonna set them into position and then grab my tool. And because it doesn't require any tools, we go ahead and take our two push fasteners drop those down in. So using an M3 tool, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these back down. They're just going into rubber grommet fasteners, so you just want enough of a preload to get those to expand a little bit, but you don't have to crank down on them completely. Go ahead and stall our seat. Make sure you capture that front tab. And if you remember, we left our fasteners in there. So using an M5, and go ahead and secure that back down. So we're gonna take our passenger peg, seat, passenger peg. Take our passenger seat, move our handle kind of out in front of it. Just work that down into position. Our very last step here is just gonna to be to come back to our signals, make sure we have the angle right, tighten down on them, tighten down on the brackets, just kind of secure everything back into its final position. But otherwise guys, this installation is complete. Catch you in a second. All right guys, so with our signals installed, our bike put back together, I did go through and just check one last time, kind of made sure that my angles were all right. I did my 
last tightening down of all of my hardware there just to make sure that everything stays in position. I'm gonna do one last check before I complete the installation. So we have left, we have right. They are flashing at the OEM flash rate, so that is a good sign. This installation is complete. If you guys wanna pick up any of these products that I've touched on in this video, including the brake light modulator, which you did catch in there if you are keen on details that was actually mounted. We installed that in another video. Keep an eye out for that. Maybe up ready by the time you watch this one. If you wanna pick up any of these products or want more information on them, please visit our website at tstindustries.com. If you like videos like this or want more like this, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We always have installation videos coming out. I'll catch you guys next time. It's been Brian at the TST Garage.